Uh, I recently was appointed to the weaponization subcommittee. And um, so I'm going to have plenty of long days ahead of me, kind of like what I have here on oversight. But the point of the weaponization committee was to have a conversation about the government being weaponized um, in a way so that people could somehow get some personal gain because there's this theory that this administration has somehow weaponized the government. There is not this acknowledgement that the other guy just is a criminal because that's just too hard to believe even though he currently is sitting in New York facing criminal charges that were not brought by the federal government, but instead by state government. It's a rare occasion hearing politicians speaking a truth you can say preach to. Can I get an amen? But damn if it ain't great when you see it. Folks, if you ever need a cathartic dose of sass and shade thrown at Republicans for their lies and stupidity, just Google Jasmine Crockett or just come back to this video because boy have I got a healthy heaping serving of it for y'all today with an additional surprise little gem of a clip at the end, so stick around. Now Representative Crockett here is talking in a committee meeting on oversight and accountability of the Office of Management and Budget. Management and budgeting, as you all well know, are things that Donald Trump is famously good at being really bad. A New York judge just ruled in the civil fraud case that Trump is liable of falsifying business records, conspiracy, and issuing false financial statements, among other claims. Now, Trump and the Trump Organization is now expected to repay more than $354 million. It's not the corporate death penalty, but it could be the death of Donald Trump's bank account. Judge Angeron in New York State Court has ordered Donald Trump to disgorge, that is, pay hundreds of millions of dollars as a penalty for years of malfeasance. Right, and with the plethora of examples of how terrible Trump is at management, it's no surprise he was, and would continue to be if re-elected, an absolute agent of chaos for the functioning of the federal government. Nevertheless, when I think about weaponization, I honestly can only think about Trump and his administration and all the work that he did to harm federal employees. So to be clear, Trump's 2020 executive order would have effectively gutted civil service job protections for workers across the federal government. And that sounds pretty bad already, but here's a little more context on what she's referring to. Schedule F refers to an executive order that former President Trump signed near the very end of his presidency. It would have created a new category of federal worker that basically would have existed outside of the regular laws and regulations governing the rights and protections that most federal employees have. And basically it would have been it would have just made it easier for a president or a political appointee to fire employees for al for almost any reason. How despotic do you have to be to make an executive order so you can fire federal employees at will that won't bend to yours? Though I guess we shouldn't be too surprised coming from the guy who fired people for a living. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Maybe it's less about being a dictator and just because firing people is the only thing that can get Trump aroused anymore. Do not come. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna come. Trump would have created politically charged firings of potentially thousands of federal workers and made these public servants subject to the whims of a political dictator and his posse rather than the adherence of the tenets of our constitution. So let's be clear. Individuals pursuing public service do so largely because of their belief in government. I'm sure you can make a lot more money if you just decided to go elsewhere uh, in private industry. A lot of us could, honestly. Right, I I'm sure most people could make more money in private industry, with the obvious exception of Donald Trump. Step beyond your wildest dreams. The utterly fantastic Trump Taj Mahal Casino Resort. We think it's gonna be a tremendous success. Trump financed the Taj with $675 million in junk bonds, despite telling the New Jersey Casino Control Commission he wouldn't. Calculations are that the Taj Mahal needs to make over $1 million a day to cover expenses. Trump says, no problem. The Taj started missing debt payments just seven months after opening, and in 1991 filed for bankruptcy. Trump's other two Atlantic City casinos followed suit a year later. When Trump left town, vendors were left high and dry, and some say he still owes them. Yeah, 
That was example one of nine of his failed businesses, and that video is from over three years ago. So it's no wonder Trump sees political office as his only way not just to avoid prosecution for his crimes, but also as his only viable way to make money, be it from grifting his political supporters or siphoning investments from foreign governments. Which, you know, isn't compromising at all. Um, but if this rule is implemented, it would destroy the little bit of foundation and structure public servants still have that allow them to put people over politics. How do I know this? Because Trump and his Republican lackeys stated they felt nonpartisan bureaucrats were hampering Trump's policies and he wanted to quote, shatter the deep state. Shatter the deep state? Bro, he is the deep state. He's just not even good enough at grifting or being discreet to secretly manipulate and control government policy. But I will say his ball handling skills are bar none. And take that compliment as you may, Trump. But there is one thing that Trump is actually really good at in terms of money, and that thing is debt. Um, there were some questions posed to you specifically about debt. And there seemed to be a concern about the mounting debt. And I am going out on a limb and I am going to ask you um, if you are aware of how much debt um, we added under the Trump administration out of curiosity. If you don't know, I know off the top of my head, but something tells me you may know. I, I have an imprecise number. I okay. think you have the precise number in front of you, so I don't want to give you the imprecise number if you have the precise number. No, no, no. Give me the imprecise. No, no, I'm, please. Well, I'm going, I, I'm going off of my head because that wasn't part of what I was supposed to say. All right, everyone, pause the video here and get your bets in down below. We're going Price is Right rules, so closest guess below the actual number wins. And you're gonna want in on this because the winner gets presidential immunity. But long story short, $8 trillion was added under the Trump administration. And so I think that it is important that we focus on making sure that we're keeping our debt under control, but I think it's also important that we're honest about how that debt is accrued and make sure that we don't continue to make the same mistakes. I know that the election was brought up and there are those that are standing by their man, but they also seem to be concerned about debt, which seems like the two don't go together because we know that their man actually is really good at running up the credit card debt um, for this country because he likes to give tax breaks to his very rich friends, which means that we don't get as much money coming through the door when they are not required to pay their fair share. So I just wanted to make sure that we put that out there uh, first and foremost. Someone please get this woman a tiara or a knighthood because she is slaying. But let's cap all this off with that little gem I promised you earlier. This one's an oldie, but a very goodie. This next clip is from several months ago during the Republican sham impeachment trial of Joe Biden, where Representative Crockett absolutely goes off on Republicans. And you already know it's going to be good when you notice she has a Republican shutdown timer ticking away in front of her. Repeating the same lies will not somehow turn them into truths. Kind of like the election that Trump lost. Say it with me. He lost it. Repeating the same lie that he won wasn't going to turn the election around. The lost in this chamber keep pushing lies and lunacy on behalf of a multi-time loser. So if we're going to talk about China, let's go ahead and talk about China. Let me give y'all a, a little bit of tea while we're here. So I have a document that I will ask for unanimous consent to enter into the record. It's a fact sheet on President Trump's shady business dealings with the Chinese government. What, what are you entering in? A, a record from who? This is from the Congressional Integrity. Congressional uh, Integrity Project, the dark money pack? I, I object. I object to that, too. Of course y'all gonna object, but we gonna talk about it. Of course y'all don't object. We gonna talk about it. Woo, Representative Crockett all in the ass! Exactly. And as beautiful and cathartic as that all is, it's also a clear display of how Republicans are so logically constipated that the only way for them to even potentially see reason is for someone to get all up in their asses. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we drop new videos. And please let me know your thoughts on Jasmine Crockett's remarkable takedowns of Trump and Republicans in general in those comments down below. I, for one, cannot wait to see more of her because she does not hold back and we need a hell of a lot more of that in congress right now if you can we'd greatly appreciate your support over on patreon as well to help us continue to grow this channel and bring you more great content for really american i'm kenny hess and i'll see you guys in the next one